Okay. Good morning, good morning to the curb. Thank God for each and every one of you. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm happy today. Not because today is Super Bowl Sunday, but <laughs> the fact that God has always been the MVP. So I thank God for each and every one of you having a mind to come out. And those that are in your houses, that, that the doors are open, the windows are open, that listening, I want you to understand that God continues to love you. No matter what you've done yesterday, that doesn't matter. It's all about you and you being here in sign mouth and, and, and sound mind and body right now. So we bless you, each and every one of you. As we get ready to commence our service, we're going to pray and I want you to take your shoes off. Get ready for a hallelujah good time. Father, we thank you for this hour. We thank you for this time that you blessed us with. This moment, God, that you are allowing us to be witnesses of your grace and your mercy once more again. God, we look for you to move in a mighty way. That you would touch our families, God. That you would deliver. Uh, that you would heal in a way that only you can. Allow it to manifest in our lives. And we be careful to give you the glory, you the praise. Now, God, we, we open this service solely to you and you alone because you're worthy, God. And we thank you. We thank you for loving us enough that you woke us up, started us on our way, God. You, you gave us activity of our limbs. Lord, we just celebrate you right now in the name of Jesus. Have your way in this place. Use our youth, God, that you would guide them. God, use the choir master to... Use the musicians, Master. We just want to be pleasing to you. And Father, when we open our mouths, Master, we don't want it to be contingent. But Lord, to know that you are worthy to be praised. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
those children right there almost made me run. One of these days, y'all saying, Pastor, I'm just talking about running. I tell y'all something. They about made me run on that. For them to decide that song, take me to the king. I, look, I don't want to go to church. Just take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. My heart is torn to pieces. And this is my offering. I don't know how y'all can be on this seat in the seat right now. First touch ushers, if y'all would open the door, your pastor's about to run. I'll tell y'all something. These children, you know, maybe it's just me. I don't know. I don't, know. I don't get it. My God! Take me to the key. You all sang beautifully. We bless the Lord for you. We bless the Lord for God. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> mm, mm, mm. Yeah. What you say? I'm an old church now. Tired of being a tired. Anybody that's just tired of going to church? Yeah. Let's go to the king of the day. How about that? Oh, man. Amen. 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 We thank God for them. You all are you're so beautiful. You're standing in your charge. I want you to know that God recognizes you as always. Yes, your spirit to continue to seek him. Yes, okay. Um, I know that us grown folk don't have it all together. <laughs> but one thing we can do, we all can work together. Yes, and we can grow in Christ together. Yes, all right. Amen. And I thank God that you all so be into your parents. Yes, because that's what scripture is all about. Says, children, obey thy parents in the Lord. For this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise. That your days will be long. So God made a promise to you that you will get to the age of the elders that are here. If you just be obedient. Amen. Let's give them a hand of praise. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Announcements. Y'all bless us. Woo, God. Y'all got me happy. Oh, y'all, yeah, it's going to be some running today. You might as well get ready to move the camera because I'm running. on the conference phone, prayer and Bible study, Wednesday on Zoom at 6 p.m., deacons and ministers meeting on Thursdays at 6 p.m., Sunday school for women on Sunday morning at 9 a.m., Sunday school for men on Sunday morning at 9 a.m., and Sunday worship service at 11.30. We will also have the message being heard in the parking lot and will be streaming via three technology mediums. That is Facebook and Instagram, and you will uh, have YouTube available to you after this uh, service is done. And we will have altar prayer 
Following the invitation to the fellowship, then let us be mindful of our church family and community, the sick, the bereaved, and the shut in. <laughs> let us pray for one another and love one another. Amen. Yes. Yeah. And we have a thank you card with gratitude for the gifts of your kindness and thoughtfulness. To the deacons with a grateful heart, our family thanks you for the blessing that you sent to us in words no but but no sorry. But no thank but thank you again. And that is from Russell and Laura Goodman. Does anyone else have any announcements this morning? Yes, I have one. Uh, this Tuesday, 5 o'clock trustee meeting here at the church. 5 o'clock this Tuesday here at the church, trustee meeting. Yeah. This Tuesday. <laughs> Good morning, church. Good morning. Today is Youth Sunday, so I just wanted to take some time out. So introduce you to our youth. This is our youth. Down at the end, we have Ayana, and she is interested in playing the tuba. She really likes to sing. And next to her, we have Corbin. He really likes the drama, and he is our oldest fearless leader. <laughs> Next to him we have Jasmine and she is into cheerleading and volleyball. Next we have Jaden and he is in the gifted class. He wants you guys to know he's good at math. And so if you guys have any math problems solved, So in the youth, we gather on Thursdays, sometimes we gather on Saturdays, sometimes we'll change it up for so that way we can meet everybody's needs. So we want all the kids to come and we want all the kids to feel like, you know, there's not, if they miss a day that they're going to miss out, we try to make it. So that way everybody can make it and um, sometimes you got to be a little bit flexible to work with so many families, Amen. but Amen. you know, we're doing it. And in youth, we are studying ushering. They're singing in the choir. They're practicing scripture. We're also learning about prayer. We're learning right. to talk to God from your heart. You know, both of our scriptures today have to do with meditation. And that's what we're really talking about is, you know, meditating with God and just telling him what's on your heart as a personal level, not just as what somebody has told you to pray about, but something that you feel like you need to pray about on your heart. Amen. So pray for us. Keep us in your prayer. We're growing. We have two people that are coming in. We also have two graduates that are, <clears throat> we, we keep them on the prayer line is what I call it because sometimes when they get teenagers, they fall off, but we keep praying for them. So um, just keep praying for the youth. We're here and we're praying for you guys. So keep praying for us. Oh, 
because we have contingency issues. But you, on the other hand, God, your, your love is so sufficient. Look beyond our faults, see our needs. And we thank you for loving us. We thank you for opening this church some just about 125 years ago to bring men and women to you. And Father, you strengthen us that we can carry on the legacy, Master, that was, that was set forth in this ministry. Father, move on us right now. We, we, we ask for your humility that we can receive a word from you. Open our ears and our eyes. We thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. For just being God. Thank you for our youth, Lord. Thank you for loving us so. Master, not that we've been perfect, but it's all about you. And I thank you for dying that you allow us to be your righteousness in the mighty name of Jesus. Giving us that right standing. So Father, as we get ready to, to come before your throne, Father, you, you speak to us. Hide me behind the cross. Father, keep me humble. Silent my intellect. But God, I need you to speak through me. That when they hear, they hear strictly you. They see you, God. It's not about me. But Lord, it's all about you. And Father, we pray that it's this spirit that carries on beyond these walls that when one or two see any Mount Olive, Father, they're able to see you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 I know my wife um, tell you Valentine's Day, I was thinking about the rose. And I was thinking about it, you know. And the roses has so many facets. You know, I always like getting the rose that's a little, the bowl is a little tight. Because every day you look at it, there's a different splendor and a different facet with that rose. And so every day that you look at it, you behold a different beauty. And I couldn't help but to think of my single rose, my, my wife. That she's, she's definitely beautiful every day that I see her in a different way. God bless you, baby. I know that you're watching. I love you so much. If you have your Bibles, I want you to stand with me. And you will go with first go to First Corinthians 7. 32. We're dealing with this series rooted and grounded in love. This whole month we'll be looking at different aspects of love. Again, that's 1 Corinthians 7 and 32. You have that to say, man. Amen. But I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried careth for the things that belong to the Lord. How he may please the Lord. I want to use for a topic in this Rooted and Grounded in Love series. A love affair for the unmarried. You may be seated. A love affair for the unmarried. Dear Clayton, I understand that many times that as we look, we come to church, 
it appears that everything is pretty much geared for the married. I understand that. I understand that sometimes it can appear that we can be a little impartial. You know, that's really, it's really not the case. It's not uh, that the church in her proclivities just looking at the married. However, it's because Christianity itself is a marriage. And so even though it doesn't appear, it doesn't appear that we address the issues of the single, it's because even for the unmarried, there still is a love affair. And that's something that we have to look at. Church, the church is married to Christ. And all of us have a charge, whether you're married, whether you're single. The married, there's a three. There's a threefold cord. For the single, there's still a threefold cord. It's just that you don't have a, a jointed body. But the spirit of God is there. Your mind, your will, your emotion, your soul, your body, your spirit is in connection with God. And there is a love affair. God set this up. See, the married is in a love affair. But then the unmarried is in a love affair as well. And Paul makes it clear. He speaks about it there in Corinthians that there's a destination for the mentality of the unmarried. That we all at some point, before marriage, those that are in the church, I understand those that are in the church and those that may not be in the church. It doesn't change the word of the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the word of the Lord still stands. Yeah, yeah. See, and, and sometimes because the single, you know, I was single once. Sometimes the single feels that, well, what well, the Lord knows. Y'all heard that, that, that phrase. Well, the Lord knows that. Uh, that I'm dealing with some issues. Yes, he does. But the problem, or shall I say the question is, and it has always been, what is there for those who are alone with loneliness? Because that's what takes over the flesh and it gets you out of position. There are three things I want to deal with. I want to deal with position, I want to deal with patience, and I want to deal with praise. The unmarried, there's a suggestion in the text, if you look back at the text, there's a suggestion in the text that is to guide your attention, here it is, an affection Toward the Lord because there's a threat that's wrong. It's all about position. The enemy comes to rob, steal, kill, and to destroy. So his job is to bring um, or break you. He want he don't want us to be in position. Uh, to, to receive the promises. So what he does is, and I told you this before, because he knows us. He knows what makes you tick. He knows what you like. He was an anointed cherub. He protected the knowledge of God. 
And you are the knowledge of God. So he knows about you. He knows it. And, and what he wants you to do is, is to always get sidestepped that will make you question or then curse God. Well, It even brings somewhat of envy. They've been married for 50 years and I've been trying to, I've been trying to find me a husband. I've been trying to find me a wife. And that's what I've been trying to do and don't nobody want to deal with me. Well, have you ever thought that it's not that somebody don't want to deal with you, but it's that you're not in the right position. Have you ever thought about it? Have you ever thought that um, God is trying to prepare you All right. for what he has for you? But now, you, you can't continue to be in a position that's out of position. Understand the situation, and then Paul gives the same 
He gives us the same lick because he said, what the what, what fornication wants you to do, it wants you to become one with it where you lose your identity. Right. Have you ever understood that? Have you ever noticed? Uh, I've, I've noticed this, uh, um, uh, brother, brother Clayton, I've noticed this. I've noticed that when I was younger, you know, you, you get to doing things and before you know it, you're doing it all the time. Mm -hmm. I believe Jesus says a little leaven, leaven the whole lot. When you when you start doing one thing, you just before you know it, you find yourself doing it all the time. Yes. And so the enemy is trying to keep us from the love affair. Mm -hmm. God loves us so. Jesus loves us so that He said, "Listen, this is what I'm going to do. I, I'm going to take the blunt of the blow. I'm going to go to the cross." I'm going to die a painful death. I'm going to get humiliated all for you. Not only am I going to do that, but, but my father is going to stop looking at me because of all of this that I placed on me. And I've never been absent from my father because me and my father is one. And I did that so I would marry the backslider. I did that so I can marry to show you that you are worth dying for. And the enemy don't want you to recognize and grab hold to that level of love. So Paul says, he said, flee fornication. He says, flee. Because every time that you commit this, it's against your body. It's against the temple of God. And, and so Christ is inside of you, the hope of glory, and the enemy is trying to get you in a place where there's no identity. Then most of all, he's trying to get in your mind to make you feel that you're unworthy for God's love. Because we can be in ourselves. He know how to do it. Because we have a performance-based ideology about Christianity anyway. We feel that we have to be in a certain position, or shall I say, we got to do certain things in our own might to receive the love of Christ. And Jesus said, if that's the case, there was no need for Calvary. It's a love of
You come to the altar and you leave in adultery. This is a God thing. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, this is a love affair. Second thing I want to deal with is patience. See, the power of position has everything to do with patience. David said, I waited patiently for the Lord. Right. He says, he inclined to me and heard my cry. Yes, sir. I waited patiently. My body was burning, but I waited patiently. I, I had situations that I'm dealing with, but I waited patiently for I even cried. I don't know about y'all. But there were many nights that I cried. Wanted to do things my own way. Uh -huh. David said, that if you just be patient. Uh -huh. But if the neighbor said, neighbor, I need to be patient. Your patience is going to guarantee you. See, the position that you're standing in and, and being patient, understanding that you are co laborers with Christ. He's inside of you the hope of glory and he wants your desires to manifest. In fact, I read there in Corinthians where he said where he said the promises of God are yes and amen. His promises are yes and amen. So then that's not even a no. His promises are yes and amen. Problem is, there's no patience. When we operate in patience, we understand that we have to be willing participants of the Word of God. The problem that we deal with being human is that we live in a microwave society. When we're hungry, we go to the refrigerator and get some food. When we're thirsty, we go get some Kool-Aid or drink some water or something. We can go automatically and this have hinge our patience. It's hard for us to, to try to wait on God. Yeah. Maybe I ain't talking to y'all. Maybe I'm talking to me. <laughs> Maybe I'm just talking to me because I, I understand that y'all been holy all y'all. There's some things that I've done because of impatience. Because I couldn't wait on God. And I even know you, 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 you may be sitting there like you're God's first cousin. I just want you to understand. Me, on the other hand, I did some things because I could not wait. Put myself in a position where I had to suffer consequences because I couldn't wait. David said, listen, I waited patiently for him. And he heard my cry. See, I love that. I love that. Now watch this. And then the patience of it. See, no matter what position that you're in, David let you know that when he hear you, oh my God, he says he brought me also out of the mire and clay. I was, I was stuck in quicksand. I was stuck and I couldn't move because I was out of position. But I cried to God. He heard me. He inclined to me and then he got me out of the miry clay. Set my feet on the solid foundation. My feet on a rock. A rock where I could not slip. A rock where I couldn't get stuck anymore. I don't know about y'all but I I got a way on it. And see, my path in life is for me to wait on it and hear it. We got to hear it. Listen, the Bible says that there's not going to be a famine of preaching. The famine is going to be folk hearing. There's plenty of preaching around here. Man. 
the 72 black pastors in this whole state. That's just the black ones. Listen. If they were famous in preaching, look at the pews. Don't nobody want to hear God anymore. Y'all don't want to hear that. Pastor, you were doing fine until you said it. I didn't want to hear. <laughs> but it's in the patience that allows God to download me. It's in the patience that he can speak to you and he can talk to you. Position you to get in the place that you won't miss your Boaz. Oh my God. That you won't miss your roof. He's trying to say, listen, you desire to be married, and, and for every woman, let there be a husband, and every, every man, let there be a wife. But if you're out of position, uh, come on. now look, I'm going to tell you this right here. And Jesus said, listen, there's a permissive will, and then there's a divine will. If you want it bad enough, he will permit it to happen, and you won't have absolute hell. <laughs> now marriage is already hell. It's already a fight. But all when you're out of position, if the love of Zion is out of position, you don't have hell. More hell than you need to have. That's right. July, I'll be married for 25 years. Amen. And it seems like the last few years is I finally recognize what marriage is all about. Oh, that's truth. Yeah, I just found out. I just figured it out. I was going through hell. I just figured it out. Lord, thank you. See, I told you, y'all been holy all y'all life. See, I understand you. Y'all been holy, but me, on the other hand, I've always been a hard heel. But I figured it out. I figured it out that it's not about me. But it's about him. Finally found out that that's that God was. I've always had my roof there. Yeah, 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 yeah. She was always there. But I definitely wasn't a boy. But God has a way. Yes, he does. But we have to be patient. A skipping position. Us being patient to hear it. Now watch this so he can download. So there's preparation. He's got to prepare you. You're going to have to look in the mirror and say, I ain't no good. Mm. This is a love affair. And even though I know many that in marriage, you're not honest with your wives or husbands. Yeah, that's the reason why I let my wife dress me. <laughs> See, I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry about it if somebody lying to me and say, boy, you look good. <laughs> See, I trust the woman. I trust the woman. As long as she dress me. Come on, make it point. Now, I say things jokingly, but I'm saying that there's a problem. And it's because we're not being truthful in hearing God. The fact of the matter is, you all, without the grace of God, I mean, we're no good. That's the fact of the matter. We're no good. But now, but now, but even in our, in the absence of moments when we fall short, God is still faithful. Yes, he is. And that's what I love about this love affair is that he's faithful. Yes. Even when we're not faithful to him, he's faithful to us. Yes, sir. And if we be patient, listen. We can hear and then be prepared 
for the marriage. Last thing I want to deal with is praise. Not only do you have to uh, be in position for love, you have to be patient. You have to operate in patience. And then you have to praise out of love. Okay. See, no matter what your situation is, we have to learn how to praise God in advance. Okay. I'll say that one more time. No matter what your situation is. See, your praise is out of love because you understand that God has already given you what you need. But you have to position yourself. You have to be patient. God told Abram, he said, listen, I'm going to make your name great. I'm going to give you a child from your own loins. It went to 25 years later before Isaac came. But nevertheless, he was a willing participant of the word. Now, thank God that we're under a better covenant with better promises. It don't take us 25 years to manifest. But he is trying to teach us how to get in position. How to, to, to operate in patience. And it's out of position and it's being patient that our praise automatically comes. Amen. See, we should always love it. Yes, sir. We're, we're co laborers. Now, watch this. Hebrews 13 and 15 says, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. He wants you to just praise him. Yes, he does. That's right. Fair enough, simple enough, praise him. But God, my go ass ain't okay. He's still saying, all I need you to do is just praise. My kids in Washington is gone. He still said, all I need you to do is just praise. Man, I know you're saying that what happened to the answer. He said, all I need you to do is just praise. Because somewhere down the line, your chapter 42 got to come. Have y'all ever read Job? Job went through so much hell. But I love reading chapter 42. Wife talked about it. Said curse God in that. He lost all 10 of his children. Told his wife, you sound like a foolish woman. His three friends came and said, you must have did something wrong. Yes, sir. So no, I haven't. Okay. And not one time did Job, did he curse God. No, sir. No. In essence, he still praised him. Mm -hmm. Not saying that he didn't have any situations. Mm -hmm. They weren't dealing with some issues. Not saying that his theology was wrong. But he kept on believing. He praised God. David says in 103, and I think we're dealing with this even in Bible study. David said, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that's within me, bless his holy name. See, in this love affair of the unmarried, you're eventually going to have to understand that 
Yes, that you're going to call on Jehovah Jireh. He's the holy name that you call because he's going to provide you with everything that you need. David said, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. And I'm so glad, yes, I'm glad today that I got a God that's going to make sure that I'm benefited. I don't know. Yes, I don't know uh, what what my future may look like. But I know that God, yes, He will supply. Let me change that. He has supplied all of my needs. Yes, and I'm reminded of the woman in John. The Samaritan woman. And if you notice, the Samaritan woman came to the well. Jesus was there. Yes, and he began to talk to this woman. Yes, this woman had a position problem. And Jesus recognized the problem that the woman had. She was talking about Mount Gerizim, yes, in the place to worship. Jesus told her, yes, that come a time that you won't worship in Mount Gerizim. Yes, that she was out of position. Yeah, he told her, yeah, you've been married five times and the one you're with now. You still, he's still not your husband. But something happened when she met the seventh man by the name of Jesus. Yeah, see, sometimes, uh, yeah, you go through one, two, three, four, five, and six. Yeah, and once you look up, you tell the Lord, uh, it's something that I gotta be doing wrong. Yes, Jesus said, yes, I want you to understand that I'm the man that you've been looking for. Yes, you've been thirsty. This is for the youth right here. You've been thirsty for a man, but I'm the one Yes, that's going to quench all of your thirst. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes, I want you to know, yes, the Lord is looking for true worshipers. Yes, it's not about the mountain, and it's not about the men you've been with. It's always been about the seventh man. In order for you to get the love affair that you've been looking for. Yes, the woman got up after Jesus began to talk and said, I perceive you to be a prophet. Jesus said, yes I am. And I need you to get away from that buster. Isn't that good news? Jesus said, it's all up to you, but uh, I came uh, to give you life and that you can have it more abundantly. Yes, yes sir. I'm so glad that Jesus uh, said it's all about the praise. Because the praise positioned us to be true worshipers. And I have David say that he can have us in the praise of his people. Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, I'm so glad that he loves me. He took the time to take care of me. Yes, he did. He took the time to look beyond faults and see my needs. I've been in a bad situation, but he's always loved me. 
been in bad situations, but uh, he's always cared for me. And all I got to do is just listen for God. And he'll position me where I need to be. I may not be the best person, but God still got something for me. He loves me so. He loved me so that uh, he went to the cross because uh, he loved me. He loved me so that he said that even if uh, your marriage had made it, uh, even if uh, you haven't found that perfect match, uh, I want you to know that I'm still uh, in love with you. That this love of that just can't be knocked to the side. This love of that cannot be kicked over. Because I'm the one that loves you enough that I make sure that you wake up early in the morning. I'm the one that makes sure that you still have a job.
Are you listening for me? And he's so careful in this love affair that he will allow you to commit fornication with different situations, different circumstances, and different people. And he said, my arms are still open wide. I love it. And I thank God that he loves me in a way that no one else can. But I have to work at being in position. I gotta hear it. I gotta be reminded that we are one. Then I have to be patient. My patience is going to allow me to be a willing participant of what his word has said. Because surely his word has to come to pass because he can't deny himself. Then I gotta praise him. Because I know that he's true. He's gonna get me where I need to be. God is that good, you all. And he hasn't stopped loving us. He hasn't. His finished work on the cross established his love. It established it. That he took all the performance away. You don't have to do anything. It's everything that he's done. He just needs you to just operate in one action verb. And that verb is called belief. If you can believe, whatever situation you're going through is over. You've been here and you've been there. You may, COVID may have caused you to. 
to you know, to stay home and reevaluate things. Well, we accept you by letter, Christian experience. You can be a part of this Bible believing ministry that preaches and teaches the word. And as we grow together, you too will grow in Christ. And then there may be someone, someone saying, well, well, Pastor, I, I'm not in a position to come to Christ. There's nothing that you can do. Well, I tell you, the Holy Spirit is here to restore you. He's here right now to align you up. That's the God that we serve. Not that we have it all together, which is the reason that we're in the church. We're here because we don't have it together. We're here that we recognize that if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? Yeah, I don't, I don't have a monopoly on this. I believe it though. I believe that he loves me. I believe he died for me. And I know it was him that woke me up this morning. I don't have a monopoly on him. I'm letting you know I don't have it all together. But he does. And I'm going to stick on this side. Do we have one? Do we have one today? God is so good. He's so good to us. I want you to be able to hear. My desire is that we hear God.
somebody he healed. I'm telling y'all something. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. My God, my God. At this time, Father, that's our, that's our 
have a healing God it's in the finished work of the cross that's our breakthrough Lord it's in the finished work of the cross that's our traveling grace Father our faith is in the finished work of the cross and Father to the, to the man of God that lost his wife send a word of healing to him right now touch him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet Father cover cover him right now let him feel your presence and then God you raise us up bring forth the audit to us God that we're able to be in position when the call comes do it for your glory Father I thank you right now for being God and being God all by yourself thank you Lord for answering prayers for positioning us God to receive the promise you say your promises are yes and amen that there's no no in, in your vocabulary that your promise is always yes and finished amen so God, move on us right now. Give us the love that's needed. Allow us to express it day to day. Allow us to express it among our brothers and our sisters. And Father, and that the unbelievers, as they spectate and they look, they're able to know that it's only you that's within us. And that it's our walk, it's our conversation that will bring them to Christ. I thank you now. Thank you for answering every prayer. I thank you, O oh God, for positioning us to receive your promise. Do it for your glory. I cancel every assignment that the enemy has against this church, against everyone that's under the sound of my voice. I cancel in the mighty name of Jesus, and I release your blessing over every hearer, every doer of your word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Now you all, it's time for offering. And you all know I just don't walk through offering because I understand that offering is worship. Okay? And I don't ever want anyone to take the gist that, okay, it's just offering. No, 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 no. I don't want anybody to ever believe that. Because it's worship, God has designed the system, you all. You know, it's really not even about your employment. Let me, let me say that right there. Your employment, we thank God, but it opens the door to your worship. financially increase in the kingdom is not stocks and bonds. When we learn how, when we learn the power of sowing, we learn the power of seeing, that's where your increase comes. Your increase comes by you acknowledging that Father, you're going to allow somebody to meet me in perfect time. I wish I had help in here. He said, Give and I'll give it back to you. Press down, shake it together, running over will mean it. Pour it to your bosom. Do you see how God positioned us? As we do what the word of the Lord says, he has somebody. And what your worship does, it puts you in a position that you won't miss who's coming to pour into your bosom. Some of you may be looking for the scratch off. It ain't the scratch off that's going to do it. Some of you may be, hey, hey, I, 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 I hit, you know, it's Super Bowl, I, I hit those books. That $2,500 spread ain't going to do it. Right, right. I'm trying to tell you that God said, listen, it is, it is my desire that you prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prosper. And when you understand that what you sow is what multiplies. Isn't that good news? Your sowing is the thing that multiplies. It's not you putting it in the, in the savings. Because you know as well as I know that three months down the line you're going to go in to fix something. That's not it. He says, I've given you that's a divine economic system if you can just believe. He said, all I need you to do is believe. In Genesis 9, he said, he said, seed time and harvest will always remain. Seed time and harvest will always remain. As soon as the earth under your feet, he says seed time and harvest will always, it'll always remain. He says, there you, we have to learn, now we so constantly in the spirit with the word of God. I'm in Corinthians now. But we have to learn to sow in the physical realm too. And we can't be so holy. We quote scriptures. And then we don't sow physically and you expect God to move. Y'all, it's all about position. Everything that we do in Christ is about position. And this is holy. Offering is holy. So I want everyone to stay. Those that are giving, I understand that there are different pay schedules and things of that nature. 
those that have a desire to give, I just want you to believe God. Prove it. He said, prove me. When I open you the window, that he'll make you the heavenly vessel that you are. Father, we thank you for the offering those that, that are giving those that have a desire. And Lord, we bless it now. Give it back to them 30, 60, and 100 fold. Father, you say within your word that if we give, you say you'll give it back to us. Press down, shake it together, run it over. We're being poured to our bosom. And we'll believe your word because you can't deny yourself. Thank you for this divine economic system. Thank you for the kingdom teaching us how to worship you. And I will give it. In Jesus' is that mighty name, let every heart say amen. amen. First touch you in charge. church, Albuquerque, and it will pull up. You will see a white church with red trimmings. And so we thank you in your giving. We thank you. All right, you all. I want to thank everybody. Let me say this. I want to thank everybody, those that are participating in the pledges. We, we bless the Lord for you. 
those that uh, may not be able to, I don't want you to feel bad. I don't want anyone to feel bad, okay? No, no, it's not about that. But you can pray for the success of what God has placed within us to do. Amen? We do solicit. Prayers don't cost anything. But they are enormous. And so I pray that all of us are praying. Um, so I, I want us to remember that. Um, again, for those maybe that don't know um, what's going on, that this is about the church expansion pledge. And uh, Mother Roberta, she's, she's been diligent in what she's done. There's a form on the outside on the information table. It gets your name, your address. And for those that are online, I will, uh, you have to email us and we'll get you all the information. And so it has name, address, phone number, email address, of course, your pledge amount. The platinum is a thousand and above. Gold is seven fifty. Uh, silver is five hundred. Bronze is two fifty. And then if there's another amount, you, you may be saying, "Hey, I cannot give any of those things, but I do want uh, to participate and put in." Then, hey, there's an amount on there that you can if you can do a hundred, you can do hundred and fifty. Then so be it. God bless you. Uh, that we'll accept it. And so we have these. We have these envelopes outside once again and so you have the gold pledge amount you have other pledge amount you have bronze and so on so we do have uh, those envelopes my daughter texted me the other day and said daddy I need the information and so I made sure she had, well actually last night and so I took a picture of everything and I sent it to her no that was Saturday I think. yesterday so I took a picture and sent it to her she said, I want to make sure I hear you and get mine in. Right. I said, well, yeah, you might need to go on then. <laughs> um, so, but if there are any questions, you please, you can ask our trustees. Uh, they, will, they will gladly speak to you about it, you all. Uh, what we're sowing into is that we're sowing into where we're going. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we sow. To where we want to go. All right. And you got to understand that. Yeah, that we have to have vision. If there's no vision, we perish. Okay? And so we're pushing this. And I thank God for each and every one of you that have been steadfast in everything that you're doing. So once again, we solicit all prayers in this endeavor. Also, March the 5th, first Sunday. We will be, we will start worship at 10.30. Yes, sir. Yes. Somebody shout 10.30. 10.30. 10.30. 10.30. 10 All right. That'll be the first Sunday in March. We're going to open the church for them. We have to. We can't allow God to be cheated any longer. Amen. Amen. So we got to get that. You got to get off them phone. The phone's so impartial, impersonal. That's right. I'm a I'm a personal type of guy. I want to see you. Where you at? Give me a handshake. Give me something. I need to see you. But uh, it, what it does, it brings us closer together. Yes, it does. Say things jokingly, but he said, "For sake not the simple." We need to have downloads together, okay? And there's nothing like being in a worship service. Right. You can kid yourself all you want. There ain't nothing like, like the worship service. So let us work on that. Um, tell a friend, tell a neighbor I'm about Zoom. So listen, you all know, we won't be coming to the church. We'll be totally on Zoom this Wednesday, okay? okay. Totally on Zoom. What, what I would love to do, so just put you in the in the hot seat. I want us to have at least 50 on Zoom. What? 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 I guess I do. That, that means that you're not accountable. 
Say amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. Somebody shout 50. 50. Can we invite some friends? You sure can. Absolutely. I want you to invite all you can. I want everybody to get on there. And the reason I'm saying this, listen, y'all, we're dealing with healing. That's right. Yeah. If we don't know, right. how can we? Yeah. You don't know. You but it's in the Word. All of our prayers should be this. We should be praying and thanking God for what he said. In advance. Did you catch that? Mm -hmm. Yes, by his stripes we are healed. But what else is there to it? Thank him in advance. Right. Amen. And that's what we're going to learn. We're going to learn how. It's all about positioning, y'all. It's all about mental positioning. It's about believing. So. Let us get at least 50 on there. Because eventually what's going to happen, y'all, we're going to have to call for a corporate prayer, a corporate fast. Yes. Yes. It's what the church do. Y'all look at me like, what's that? Pastor? <laughs> no. You didn't tell me. Fasting is not pushing the plate back. That's not it. I'm going to teach you what fasting really is. But it does take time. It's going to take in a lot of time that you're going to have to put aside. Okay? This is important. This is the safety, the welfare, the provision, the vision of the church. That's why Jesus said what he said. This kind right here, coming by fasting and by prayer. He wasn't talking about this type of healing. He was talking about this type of faith. But we'll get into that in the Bible study. So we have to, I want us all to learn. We all learn. And when I say, listen, y'all, we're praying at this hour, or we're praying for this, and we're looking for God to move now, then we're corporately, we know where we are mentally together. How can two walk together except they be what? Agreed. Amen. So, with that being said, I thank you all in advance for seeing you already. On the Zoom. So let me tell you, tell your sisters, your, your, your babies, your aunties, grandmas, cousins, friends, tell them coming on. And so we have the right hand of fellowship. Thank you, Deacon Clayton, I heard you. We have the right hand of fellowship journey. Amen. Come on up here. Come on up here. Bless you, woman of God. What's our, where are our other gentlemen at? Is he here today? Jesse. Jesse isn't here. Hey, Mom, I was looking for you, Mom. What do you mean? Now, Mama, you can't be doing me like that. Looking for you, and then you come in at the end. <laughs> I know she was listening to you all, and I'm not saying that. You know, sometimes I got to put my eyes on her. Because, Mom, you know, look at me. See, we have this joke, you all, right? So she didn't come in and throw her hands up so I knew that I finished in time. <laughs> Mama, we working, we working, Mom. Okay, all right, come on up, come on up in the front. Amen, let me come down here. I want everyone to stand as we get ready to conclude. I thank each and every one of you for coming out. I thank you for your faithfulness, I do. Um, Y'all come and hang out with your boy on Zoom. Hang out with him. I promise we're going to have some fun. Do we not have fun, you all? We do. Yes, we, we do. do. We have some fun now. I need a scripture when you study it hard because I need to get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. We're going to make sure you get that scripture. Um, so what we're going to do uh, to the media ministry, if you would, put the scriptures on there that we'll, we'll be teaching on. Um, for Wednesday, please. Um, it's going to be on there, but also in that 1 through 5, uh, Psalms 103, 1 through 5, okay. I want you to look at that with intent. Okay. Write out what jumps out to you. Okay. Write out the questions that may be. Okay. What we want is for you to grow. You understand the word. And then how, you know, what context? Okay. You know, why, you know, how did this come about? Why did David say this? 
huh, what is he really talking about? So we want to answer all of those things so you can have a, a better grasp of the word of God. All right? Grab somebody's hand. Grab somebody's hand. Bless you, bless you. Grab somebody's hand. If you're, if you're not too mean, grab, grab somebody's hand. Amen. 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 Y'all, you know I do say things jokingly now, so don't, don't hold me That's to that. Okay. I want you to squeeze love in that hand. You all, we have to love one another, no matter what we got going on. Y'all, we have to show love in this ministry. And we're doing such a great job. I'm, I'm hearing more and more that my olive is warm. I'm, I'm hearing it, and I think that we all don't want to call it that. So let's continue to work at it. Father, I thank you right now as we conclude in this service, definitely not from your presence. Father, that you will release the spirit of application that we can apply what we've heard, we can apply what we've seen, and that we can be more of who you've called us to be. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for the finished work of the cross. Keep us in this hour, in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. I worship you. I bless your name because you are God. You sit on the surface of the earth, having all powers under your auspicious hand. We bow down to your sovereignty. We recognize your divinity. That you would have your way in us. That we can be who you've called us to be. We thank you. And we celebrate you. As the choir sing, as they finish the song, we will conclude it. Amen. Come on around and give Sister Journey the right hand of fellowship. Yeah.